Now in part C, we need to find the value of the mass m. How are we going to do that? Well, what we know is because the string is inextensible, then when p moves downwards, m is going to immediately move upwards. The string does not stretch, so that means that the accelerations are going to be exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is mark in the acceleration of m, that's going to be upwards, and that will be 2.8 meters per second per second. We need to mark on the forces acting on m, so there will be the weight downwards, so that will be mg newtons. The tension will act upwards and the tension will be the same as the tension on P. Why is that? Because the pulley is smooth. If it wasn't smooth the tensions would be different. Okay so because we're given that it's a smooth pulley the tensions will be the same. We found out in the last part that the tension T was 3.5 newtons. In fact, I can change that one over here. I'll put that one to 3.5 newtons. So, in order to find the mass, all I've got to do now is to consider Q. I'll just say that there, consider Q. And because the particle is moving upwards, I'm going to look at the equation of motion upwards as positive. So I'm going to resolve upwards, so my arrow is pointing upwards, saying that I'm going to take that as the positive sense. So therefore we have the force upwards is going to be 3.5, 3.5 newtons there. We've got minus mg acting downwards. That's the overall force on Q, and that is equal to the mass m times the acceleration, which is 2.8. So what I need to do now is just rearrange this. So I'm going to add mg to both sides. So therefore we would have 3.5 equals, let's say 2.8m here I think, 2.8m plus mg. Okay. Now taking g to be 9.8, we've got 2.8m plus 9.8m and that's going to come to 12.6m, so we've got therefore 3.5 equals 12.6m. So just need to divide both sides by 12.6 to get m, so m equals 3.5 over 12.6. I could do this on a calculator which most probably would give me the fraction straight away as an exact value or I could say times top and bottom by 10 and that would give me 35 over 126 and then dividing this through by 7 what we get is m equals 7 into 35 goes 5 times and 7 into 126 goes 18 times and you have m equals 5 18 which is the value we had to prove that m was. Okay so hopefully you've understood that and that brings us now to the end of part C.